Hey guys, welcome to my Yunjin guide. Whether you like opera or not, you can't deny that Yunjin has a stunning design, which makes me want to main her already. But anyways, today I'm going to be teaching you guys what makes Yunjin good, what her best build is, and what her best teams are, and give an overall review of the character at the end of this video. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly let you guys know that we go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone, so if you like live content, come say hi. My name is Braxophone, and with all of the introduction out of the way, let's start with Yunjin's kit and what makes her good. So the first thing you guys need to know about Yujin is that her entire kit revolves around buffing normal attack characters. There are tons of characters that can be played around normal attacks, for example, just two of them are going to be Yomiya and Razor, those two are DPS that deal a lot of normal attack damage. Yujin's elemental burst lasts for 12 seconds and makes it so that when a character deals normal attack damage, it's increased by a portion of Yujin's defense. This isn't Yujin's own proc of damage, it's actually added into the character's damage formula, meaning that the buffed character's stats change how much Yujin's buff gives. Now the reason why I'm excited about this personally and why you guys should be too is because on a high-end Yunjin with constellations, you could see up to 33% total damage increase on normal attack carries. That is a huge increase. As far as damage from her burst though, it's only one proc and it has high scaling, but it's not based on her defense, so the damage isn't super important. And then one last thing to note about her burst is that it has a trigger quota of 30, which essentially just means that after 30 normal attack hits, the burst will end and Yunjin will stop giving the normal attack buff. Having a quota of hits sounds bad, but realistically, you're not going to be hitting 30 times during your 12 second burst consistently, unless you're hitting a ton of targets with every normal attack, or if you're using an attack speed focused build. Generally speaking, the 30 hit quota is not really an issue, and the cooldown for this is short at 15 seconds, so you can use it pretty often. Meanwhile, her elemental skill is similar to Beto's, and it's important to charging her burst. If you just tap, you're going to do low damage counter that's based on Yunjin's defense, and if you hold it, you'll charge up the attack to do more damage. It has two levels of charge, and if Yunjin takes enough damage to break the shield, the skill will activate automatically. At tap or level 1 charge, it generates 2 particles, but at level 2, it generates 3. Now Yunjin's Ascension 1 passive actually buffs her skill by making it so that when your hold E breaks, it automatically releases the level 2 charge, which allows you to perfect counter like Beto as well. That means if you time a perfect counter to right when an enemy hits, you can force 3 particles to be generated with just a tap. That being said though, it can be hard to pull off, and in content where your time is limited, you'll likely be using your tap skill more than her hold skill. And lastly, the cooldown is always 9 seconds no matter what the level of charge is. Yunjun's second ascension passive is another buff to her support capabilities, where it grants you more normal attack damage based on the amount of characters with different elements in your team. It encourages running multiple elements and ends up being a significant damage increase overall, and by running Yunjin in a Geo team, she does still get some buffs, it's just not as much as you would get running her with many different elements. That being said, if you use Geo, Animo, and one element so carry, you should be good. When you're leveling Eugene's talents, the most important one to level is her burst, and that's because when you increase her burst talent level, it increases the normal attack damage bonus it gives to your team by using bigger portions of her defense. Her skill can be leveled after that for a bit of damage, but it's less relevant to her overall damage output. And for materials, she needs Diligence books, Hilichurl masks, and Ashen hearts from the Inazuma weekly boss. Lastly, before we get on to the next section, I want to show you guys one huge tip for Yujin, which is to normal attack into skill into burst. If you're using something like Favonius Lance that gives you energy when you crit, this combo will quickly give you three chances to crit with Yunjin on the field. If you use her burst right after you use her skill, you won't waste any energy particles at all, and overall you'll be able to maximize the time you can use her burst buff. Again, you just want a normal attack once, elemental skill, and elemental burst right after. Now, everyone asks this about 4-star characters, so just in case you're broke, unlucky, or broke because you're unlucky, I want to run through her constellations and go over their value really quick before we get to the builds. Her constellation 1 decreases Yunjin's elemental skill cooldown by about a second and a half. The main thing this one helps is battery over long fights, but overall it doesn't matter that much. Her constellation 2 is a buff to your party's normal attack damage. When you use her burst, it gives your team a 15% normal attack buff for 12 seconds, which is the full duration of her burst. It's separate from Yunjin's damage contribution and elemental burst itself, so the effect persists even after you're past the 30 hit quota. Overall this constellation is super great value, especially being at constellation 2. Constellation 3 increases our burst level by 3, which is just great for making Yunjin give higher damage bonus from defense. Constellation 4 makes it so when Yunjin procs crystallize, her defense increases by 20% for 12 seconds, which in turn also buffs your carry's normal attacks more. Constellation 5 increases her skill level by 3, and Constellation 6 is insane because it increases character attack speed and her burst by 12%. Now the reason I say it's insane is because many characters that use normal attacks want to hit a certain amount within a time frame in order to get 
some sort of benefit. For example, Eula's burst is stronger the more hits you get when it's active, and Yoimiya's highest damage is on her 7th hit and her 5 normal attack combo, which means the faster you're attacking, the more overall combos you'll be able to do, and the higher value those characters' kits will get. There aren't a lot of ways to buff attack speed in the game, and as a result, Yunjin C6 becomes a super valuable resource. In general, Yunjin's constellations are very strong and add a lot of value to the character. With that being said, Yunjin at constellation 0 is still good at providing enough damage buffs for your team to be worth running, and even if you don't have constellations for her, she is still very strong. Overall, her constellations aren't necessary at all, but are a ton of value and make the character much stronger. That's basically all you need to know about Yunjin's kit, so we're going to talk about weapons and artifacts next, and this section is going to be potentially even wordier than the first part, but I just want to be really detailed, so let me know in the comments if you prefer this kind of depth. So Yunjin, like every other 4-star unit released during 2.0, has an 80 cost burst and doesn't generate a ton of energy particles. If you watched any of my other Inazuma 4-star guides, you've likely heard me mention the Favonius set, and that's the same thing I'm going to recommend here. The main reason being that you want her burst up as often as possible since she's a support, and because she doesn't generate a lot of particles, you need to compensate with energy recharge and bonus particles from Favonius Lance. For those of you who don't know, Favonius Lance generates white particles, which can go to characters of any element and are less restrictive than elemental particles like Animo Particles, Pyro Particles, etc., meaning you can use it to battery a character with Shibanawa, for example. It does require you to hit a crit, but that's something that's fixed with substats generally, and overall, Favonius Lance is going to be your best choice if you have access to it. However, if you're free to play, Prototype Star Glitter is actually fairly solid for Yunjin as well because of its energy recharge main stat. Its passive isn't super amazing for support Yunjin, but it makes a decent stat stick, and the main thing we want from these weapons is the energy recharge. Outside of those two, your last decent option is going to be Engulfing Lightning. Overall, Engulfing Engulfing Lightning is the most balanced weapon for dealing damage with Yunjin while still battering her, but the reason that I wouldn't suggest Engulfing Lightning is actually because it fits DPS characters a lot better, since it gives attack based on your energy recharge and Yunjin has a defense scaling kit. So Engulfing Lightning would fit a character like Raiden or Shangling much better than it would Yunjin. Now, if I didn't mention a weapon in this section, it's because the weapon isn't that great on Yunjin. The answer to every question in Genshin is it depends, but in Yunjin's case, an energy recharge weapon is going to be better than all of the other weapon options 99% of the time. If if we could run energy recharge on a circlet, then you could argue crit rate weapons would be fine on her, but since energy recharge is not a main stat on circlets, you just have to run an ER weapon. You don't really have a choice unless all of your substats are ER. As for artifacts, they are a little bit more flexible. So first I want to talk about the stats, and then I want to talk about the artifact sets themselves. So one of the nicest things about Yunjin is that she can use scraps of artifact sets and still be good, because all she needs is energy recharge to get her burst and defense to make your character steal more damage. So my friend Low Priority mathed out how much energy recharge Yunjin will need to have to have burst up constantly, and it works out to about 240 energy recharge, which is a pretty big number. One of the nice things about Yunjin is as she levels up, she gains more energy recharge passively. So overall, building high energy recharge using an energy recharge sands and Favonius Lance is actually very easy. Keep in mind though that the 240% might be more than what you need for content with lots of enemies, since they're all going to drop energy particles as well. Everyone's energy recharge needs will be different depending on the team you're running, but just generally speaking, 240% is a safe place to be. So before I tell you which sets are best, I want to explain your stat priorities so that way you guys can understand why we use each artifact set. So for her sands, you're going to want to use an energy recharge percent sands, and as for her goblet, you're going to want to use defense instead of geo damage since we're focusing on her support buffs and those scale on her defense. For her circlet, you have two options. You can either run a defense circlet and bank on getting crit rate substats to make your Favonius Lance work, or you can use a crit rate circlet and bank on getting defense substats. For this, it's going to vary from person to person, but generally speaking, it'll be easy to get a curse crit rate circlet that rolls into defense, while it might not be easy to get a defense circlet that rolls into crit. For substats, you're going to want energy recharge up to 240% maximum, and then you want crit rate and defense. And ideally, you're going to have around 40 crit rate, but it's not the end of the world if you can't make that happen. Okay, so based on what we just talked about with stat priorities, there are four sets that I want to talk about. The first set I want to talk about is the four-piece husk set, which gives you 30% defense for the two-piece and a bunch of extra defense and geo damage for being off the field. Now, because Yunjin scales on defense and doesn't spend a lot of time being off the field, she takes full use of this set's effect. But that being said, farming a four-piece set is hard unless you're code, and it would be much easier to use two two-piece sets instead. So if you're in that boat, I actually recommend trying two-piece husk and two-piece emblem of severed fate. Emblem is really good because it gives you 
you 20% energy recharge to help you reach that threshold you need to get Yunjin's burst up all the time. The difference in support capabilities from Yunjin with two-piece husk and two-piece emblem versus four-piece husk is it's negligible. It's barely noticeable at all. But outside of those two options, I also want to talk about Archaic Petra because honestly, the set is just really underrated. The two-piece set doesn't really matter for Yunjin, but the four-piece gives you 35% elemental damage bonus based on the element of shield shards that you pick up. Typically, people that run this set for two reasons. One, Viridescent Venera is better, and two, the character with Archaic Petra has to be the one to pick up shards, which can sometimes lead you to running around the instance. But the main reason I'm suggesting Petra is because when Yunjin uses her elemental skill, she does a little leap forward that'll let her pick up the shards she creates almost instantly. And because of that, if you're using single element teams like Mono Pyro, for example, you can buff your pyro damage by a ton just by using Yunjin in your regular rotation. This is something that I've tested personally and we've mapped out. It's actually very strong. The one downside is going to be that Petra actually only lasts about 10 seconds, so your buff window will be pretty small. That being said, Petra gets you more damage overall for an elemental carry, it's just barely better. Lastly, I do want to give an honorable mention to Noblesse Oblige. If you don't have a Noblesse user in your team, Yunjin can hold it fairly well because of her low burst cooldown. If you already have someone with Noblesse in your party, like Bennett, Diana, or Singchaw, it won't be worth giving her Noblesse, but if you don't have a Noblesse user, Noblesse is another viable option to help buff your team. So I know that was a lot of information. To summarize, Petra is technically the best set, followed by 4-piece Husk, followed by 2 Husk and 2 Emblem, but the damage difference is so small that you should really just focus on whichever set gives you the best defense percent, crit rate, and energy recharge substats. Now I want to take a quick second to answer this question that I know a lot of people are going to ask or a lot of people are going to mention, and that question is, is Yunjin a good DPS? At first glance, you might think so because her entire kit revolves around buffing normal attacks, which could mean that she's a normal attacking polearm. However, Yunjin boosts normal attack damage with her kit through defense. Now this is great for her as a support, but Yunjin's basic attacks are based on physical damage and attack stats, and by building Yunjin into defense, you're effectively giving her less damage potential as a main DPS because while that stat is going to give her elemental skill and burst a lot of value, it won't affect her auto attacks enough to compensate for the lost attack and physical damage. On top of that, her multipliers for her own normal attacks are just very low. Now that's not to say you can't build her as a main DPS for the overworld, but what I am saying is that her kit doesn't complement her own personal damage that much because of her split defense and attack scaling. So because of that, she's not a great main DPS. Now, before I list the best teams for Yunjin, I want to let you guys know that these teams aren't the end-all be-all of Yunjin and are just some of Yunjin's best options. A lot of times when I make these kinds of videos, people will comment down below talking about how X and Y aren't actually that good of a team in comparison to top teams in Abyss. So I want to clarify that these team sections are more focused around providing options for you to play the character rather than providing a top meta team because not every character has a top meta team they can be in. So I can't, I can't always do that. Anyways, the first team that I want to show is Yoimiya, Kazuha, Yunjin, and Bennett. Now this is actually a mono pyro team, which you probably never thought you'd hear from me. But that basically just means it's not focused on reaction damage and is focused on shredding resistances and buffing pyro damage. Yunjin and Yoimiya are ridiculously strong together, since you're getting normal attack damage from Yunjin, and at C6 you're also getting attack speed. But with Kazuha, you're also getting 40% pyro damage, if he's relatively invested, as well as massive attack buffs from Bennett. With all of these supports, Yoimiya can actually put out insanely good damage over time. In this team, if you don't have Kazuha, you can replace him with C2 Jean, who increases attack speed and allows Yoimiya to get more hits in per her skill. And if you don't have C2 Jean, you can use Sucrose with Thrilling Tails, but you'll lose some time on Yunjin's burst, so that's something we're thinking about. Generally speaking, Kazuha is going to be much better. Alternatively, you can substitute Kazuha and Bennett for Singcho and Raiden, or another Electro unit just for general damage, but my favorite that I've tested has been with Kazuha, Bennett, and Yunjin. The second team I want to show you guys today is the Razor, Kaya, Yunjin, and Chi Chi team. And this is one of the most free to play accessible teams with Yunjin in it. Razor is a character that was sort of forgotten about as newer characters came into the game, and he's not a top unit, but in general, his damage is actually still pretty solid, and he can be used to clear Abyss at 36 stars with the right investment in teams. This team focuses on Superconduct to lower enemy physical resistance, and that combined with Yunjin to buff your normal attacks, and Chi Chi with the clam set to output extra physical damage makes this a top Yunjin team. Now, if you don't have Chi Chi, you can can substitute her for Diona for shields and heals, and if you don't want to use Kaya, Rosaria is also an option. The third team I want to show you guys today is the C6 Nobel carry team featuring Yunjin, Albedo, and Goro. And this team might seem counterintuitive because Yunjin's ascension passive makes it so that when you have multiple different elements, you get a higher normal attack buff. However, it's still really good because her elemental burst still applies as normal and all of her constellations do as well. The thing is, Goro will buff Yunjin's defense, which gives more normal attack damage. He buffs Albedo's off field damage and he buffs Noel's shield and defense snapshot in her burst. Goro gets triple value from his kit in this team and with Yunjin buffs, 
Noelle's auto attacks will beat out Spinbot significantly. With C6 Yunjin, you'll be able to buff Noelle's attack speed as well, which ends up increasing overall damage output and healing. Combined with Geo Resonance, this team is very strong. The last team that I wanted to show you guys today is the Zhongli, Yujin, Cryo, and Electro team. Now the reason I just said Cryo and Electro is because it can be any Cryo or Electro characters that fill the spot, though DPS would probably help more, but I'll explain it in a second. So Crescent Pike Zhongli is not actually bad. Zhongli's auto multipliers aren't bad at all, and Crescent Pike is a broken physical damage weapon. It is disgustingly good for physical damage. Combine that with his shields, resistance shred, a superconduct team, geo resonance, and Yujin buffs, and Zhongli is outputting high damage. The Cryo and Electro choice for this team aren't hard set. You can use Kaya or Rosaria, or if you need a healer, Chi Chi or Diona will be a strong option as well. And for Electro units, you can use the option Official or Raiden, since Beta would need a battery to be useful in this team, so unfortunately she's out. And though this one's not really close to top meta, like any cohesive Genshin Impact team, if you invest in your characters, they can clear Abyss with 36 stars. And next Abyss is going to be focused on normal attacks, so this team will actually be very good. Now, a bunch of you are probably wondering about Yula with Yunjin, and so I wanted to quickly talk about why Yula wasn't listed for top Yunjin teams. So first, a huge part of Eula's damage comes from her burst. Usually, it'll be anywhere between 40 and 60% of her overall damage output. Yunjin only buffs normal attacks, which means she'll only be buffing 40 to 60% of your Eula's damage output. That being said, C6 Yunjin with Eula isn't actually that bad, because she gives attack speed, and the more hits Eula gets before her burst, the more damage her burst does. So at C6, it can be a viable option. But anyways, that's why I didn't include Eula, but you guys can honestly just play the game however you want. So now that I've told you everything about Yunjin, is she worth rolling for and building? In my opinion, yes, but only if you're playing certain characters. One of Yunjin's biggest weaknesses is that her best teams are fairly limited. In other words, like all other 4-star characters released in 2.0 onwards, she's niche. But that being said, Yunjin is incredibly strong within her niche. For the teams and characters she does fit with, her buff can be as strong as Bennett's. As future characters that focus on normal attacks release, Yunjin will become increasingly better as well. Another weakness that Yunjin has is that she needs specific weapons to work because of her energy requirements. And this is basically a theme at this point with most of the Inazuma 4-star characters, but at the least, she has an energy recharge ascension stat, so that should compensate a little bit. Yujin, however, is a super great unit when you get to use her to her full potential. She doesn't take a large amount of investment from artifacts, she fits into compositions that aren't all Geo, which isn't super common for Geo characters, but she can also be used in Geo comps with a C6 Noel carry and Goro, for example. As long as you're building a team around characters that focus on normal attack damage, Yunjin is an amazing unit that will bring your overall damage up by a ton. To be clear though, if you're not playing a character that has normal attack damage focus, because that's her main focus and as a support, if you're not using normal attack carries, she's not going to do a ton for you. With all that being said, thank you guys for watching, and let me know who you're using with Yunjin in the comments down below. Make sure that you check out the Twitch if you want to see live content, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've enjoyed. I will see you guys next time, and best of luck on your banner polls.